Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Today we're discussing uh, poor circulation to your legs and its ramifications and what can help. It's actually called PAD, which stands for peripheral arterial disease. It's also called peripheral vascular disease. It's when the arteries that carry oxygen-rich blood from your heart to your limbs, they narrow, they stiffen, and this is typically because of buildup of plaque inside the vessel's walls. So this can slow down or diminish the flow of blood to your limbs, so it typically affects your legs, and if you walk fast or you're walking uphill or up the stairs or too far, you can experience real leg pain. So hi, my name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a nutritional pharmacist. I'm also the senior scientific officer over here at Invite Health. I want to welcome you to my podcast episode, Poor Circulation to Your Legs, Nutrients Can Help. Thanks for tuning in today to the Invite Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen, or just visit invitehealth.com forward slash podcast. Please subscribe and leave us a review. You can also follow us on Metaverse, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. The information on this episode is linked at the episode description, so let's get going. So what leads to poor circulation in your legs? And later on, we'll discuss the nutrients that can help. Well, some of these risk factors you can really control. So smoking, smoking damages all your blood vessels. It damages the blood vessels to your skin and your skin gets wrinkled and and discolored. It damages blood flow to your brain and that leads to strokes and Alzheimer's disease. It damages blood flow to your sex organs so in men it can lead to ED. Uh, It damages blood flow to your arms and legs, so it leads to peripheral arterial disease. So the answer, quit smoking. Obesity, well, that's why a dietician and a gym can be helpful, because obesity damages your blood flow. It, 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 It increases the rate of thickening and stiffening your blood vessel walls. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, elevated blood sugar, so get a checkup for these so that you can fix them if you have them. We have episodes dealing with each of these issues. You might want to listen to those podcast episodes. Also a high level of the metabolite homocysteine, so let's discuss that. That's very important. When you eat protein, some of it is converted into homocysteine. This is especially true if you're lacking methyl tetrahydrofolate, the active form of the um, uh, vitamin folic acid. And homocysteine in low amounts is not an issue, it's, it's common, it's natural. But in elevated amounts, it's very destructive to the brain. It can cause depression, and it, it's a big risk factor for Alzheimer's. It could damage the back of your eyes. Uh, it could damage your hip joint and your, your hip bone, uh, increasing your risk of a hip fracture. It also increases the risk of a stroke or heart attack and jams up your blood vessels. And some of the blood vessels it jams up are the blood vessels in your legs. So if your homocysteine is elevated, you might not be able to naturally convert the folate found in vegetables into the active form methyl tetrahydrofolate. <clears throat> so the best thing to do would be to take methyl tetrahydrofolate, at least some, every day, and also get some B6 and B12 with that because they're helpful too. There are risk factors that lead to uh, clogged arteries in the legs that are out of your control. Once again, it's called peripheral arterial disease. They include being older. I mean, everybody who's older, like myself, we have some level of uh, a decline of blood flow. A family history of heart disease, kidney disease. Now, sometimes you can help prevent kidney disease by treating diabetes. and sadly, African Americans have a higher risk of peripheral arterial disease. They, have a, they say they have a, a double the risk compared to other ethnic groups. So I don't know why that's true, but that's what the stats are showing. Mm. Now the symptoms. You might not have any symptoms, or you might have very little symptomatology, very mild symptoms. And this is because your arteries haven't gotten bad enough yet. But once your arteries are more than halfway narrowed by the plaque, then you're going to have the symptoms. 
And the most common symptom is leg pain and leg cramps when you walk. You get leg cramps, your feet are, your legs are tired, they become heavy. Now the problem with that is it's easy to mistake for other conditions. And because of this, peripheral vascular disease is often overlooked by you and your doctor, and it's not diagnosed until your symptoms get bad. So the pain is pretty common. It's so common it has its own name, intermittent claudication, intermittent blood flow, intermittent blockage to blood flow. So once again, your legs will feel heavy, numb, weak, tired. Now the pain usually eases when you rest, and there's a reason for that. If you have poor circulation, you're not getting enough oxygen to the muscles in your legs. So your legs, muscles, have to look for an alternate source of fuel, so they go to lactic acid. They go into the anaerobic pathways without oxygen, you create lactic acid. And lactic acid is useful as fuel for your muscles just for a very short time. After that, it causes cramping. So if you're walking fast or walking up a hill or upstairs or something and you get these leg cramps, when you sit down and the cramps go away, it's because the lactic acid has dissolved again. The acid went away. Now, the symptoms could be sudden and range from mild to severe. So there's pain and cramping. You can even get pain all the way up to your buttocks, your gluteus maximus. But the pain is intermittent. It has to do with, um, with, with activity. <clears throat> now, as the condition gets worse, uh, you can have pain even when you're sitting on the couch. But you'll commonly feel burning, like uh, neuropathy, even at rest. The skin on your feet uh, may feel cold. They could look shiny. They could even change colors. They could become darkened. Uh, your leg hair will stop growing because it's not getting nourished. The problem is if you get a sore on your foot or on your toes, you might not even see it, and it won't heal. And this can lead to gangrene and amputation, just like it does in people with diabetes. Now, men with peripheral arterial disease also suffer with uh, erectile dysfunction. That's very common. Now, the most common cause is atherosclerosis. That's the buildup of fat plaques inside the arteries, which stiffens and narrows them. And uh, it makes it hard for blood to flow to your lower body. So the blood vessel inflammation, the limb injuries, or radiation exposure can also cause the condition. Blood vessel inflammation uh, is not that common. They usually treat it with steroid drugs. In fact, we just did, we just did a, a podcast episode on that treatment. Now, left untreated, uh, it could become severe. It could become really severe. Um, so the doctor may prescribe medications that can help this, uh, this intermittent leg pain. One of them is Playtel, Silostazol. Uh, it has a lot of side effects, uh, like a headache, like uh, dizziness, coughing. But it was once approved by the FDA for heart failure, and they found out it was causing arrhythmias. So it was causing an earlier death than people with heart failure, so they stopped using it for that. It can also lead to low platelets and low, a low white blood cell count. The way it works, celastazole is a phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor. That inhibits the platelets from sticking together. The platelets are your clotting cells. They don't aggregate, and this dilates your arteries. They also might prescribe a pentoxyphylene. Pentoxyphylene is pentoxyl. It's also a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Uh, so it's similar to the other drug, celastazole. Its only use, really, according to the FDA, is to reduce uh, the leg pain, the numbness, the cramping, and the weakness in your legs when you suffer with intermittent claudication. Now, that also has a lot of side effects, belching, bloating, uh, nausea, upset stomach, uh, vomiting and digestion. Um, the face can flush. You can have dizziness. Um, you can have chest pain. Enough blood might not reach your heart, you can have chest pain. Even like abnormal beating patterns like palpitations, um, you could, your skin can have symptoms like hives or a rash or itchiness. Uh, it might make you bleed. Uh, in rare, rare instances, it could cause uh, a septic meningitis, inflammation of the brain, and hallucinations. Both of those drugs uh, widen narrowed vessels to ease blood flow so that you could do more activities, but you know, you gotta be careful with those drugs. 
But nutrients can help, and you can use both of these nutrients together, or you could use them separately. You can also add them sa safely to your drugs. One of them is cocoa. There's many ingredients in cocoa. There's like 800 ingredients discovered so far. So they've isolated 800 different ingredients. And we talk about cocoa all the time, how many of these ingredients are so great for your memory and your brain and your brain circulation, but they're also great for circulation to your legs. So what's in the cocoa is flavin threols. They're, they're a type of polyphenol. They're a type of catechin polyphenol. And they can improve the distance a person with uh, peripheral arterial disease can walk without pain. It's because they improve flow-mediated dilation in human clinical trials. So what's that? When your heart pumps blood up to your brain or down to your legs, your blood vessel walls have to respond and pop open. And people with peripheral arterial disease, the leg, it's typically in the legs, it could be in the arms too, but the, the, the blood vessels aren't popping open, so there's not enough blood flow, the muscles don't get enough oxygen, and you get the cramping. Here's the problem. When you process cocoa into chocolate, it can remove the flavin threols. So that's why when I have a client with peripheral arterial disease, I tell them to use cocoa. I don't even tell them to use dark chocolate because we don't know if there will be any of these flavin threols in there. Now, grapeseed extract can also help. Grapeseed extract is great for circulation. Uh, when the heart pumps blood to the legs, a gas is released called nitric oxide and it pumps open the blood vessels so blood could flow smoothly. But when you have peripheral arterial disease, you don't have any nitric oxide in the blood vessel walls. Grapeseed stabilizes nitric oxide, so it's kind of like filling up a, a tire, uh, like a flat tire or uh, a tire that needs air on a bicycle. Uh, the nitric oxide pumps open the blood vessels and it's easier for the blood to flow to the leg muscles. It does this, I'll tell you how. It restores the level of an enzyme system antioxidant called SOD, superoxide dismutase, to the blood vessel walls, and the SOD stabilizes the nitric oxide. This really works. I mean, there's at least 20, 25 studies showing in people with high blood pressure, which is called hypertension, that giving grapeseed extract, if, especially if they have metabolic syndrome, like some obesity, elevated blood sugar, elevated cholesterol, anything like that, that it really improves their blood flow and can help reduce their blood pressure. But it's also been shown to help people who have problems with circulation to their legs. So grapeseed extract is safe. Uh, cocoa is safe. You could try these if you have peripheral arterial disease. And I want to thank you for tuning in today to the Invent Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or just visit inventhealth.com forward slash podcast. Please subscribe and leave us a review. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Metaverse at Invent Health. I uh, hope to see you next time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And this is Jerry Hickey signing off. Have a great day.